I was just getting ready to head into the wild and what turned out to be the USAW gun of the year or rifle of the year arrived. So I thought I'd show it to you. I was going to make it into a Patreon video. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff on Patreon. I, I hope you join Patreon. This is the best way to support the channel and to support Patreon and see some cool things. Anyway, we're going to look at the USAW rifle of the year in a couple of minutes here just so be patient uh, but it fits into a nice context because I was going to show you the 1885 I think I think we've gone through the 1885 I'd be surprised if we didn't you know how I like single shot rifles because most of the time for a really dedicated kind of wilderness person a single shot is all that matters and no need to go into that John Browning design uh, probably I'm not sure but it could be his first commercial success very simple if you don't have one of these um, <laughs> it's a great one to own 4570 short barrel and the point I'm going to be making or I'm trying to make is the versatility of this single shot action is remarkable I have no problem with hammers I don't know why everybody seemed to develop an aller allergy to hammers at, at a certain point, maybe a hundred years ago. I actually like hammers and um, the 1885 has a hammer, of course. This, this little part here, in case you don't recognize it, that you can move this around. That's for deflecting the shell. Anyhow, if, I, if you have not seen the other video or it doesn't exist, it's probably the first carbine I reach for if it's really tight if it's really dense bush as I might be facing in a couple of days uh, then I take something like this so this is one version of the 1885 now you can kind of capture that image in your mind very light quick handling excellent open iron sights uh, you don't really have to think to shoot I didn't bother putting a scope on and I frankly I usually don't although I have scopes but I can't see how the utility of this is improved with some kind of scope anyhow so I set that down now here's the same action like you won't find I don't think you'll find an action that can be turned into so many different types of rifles I've even seen these 1885s in the United Kingdom uh, turned into rifles that you you just wouldn't believe by the custom gun makers over there or maybe in Germany as well. Now this one, uh, you can tell by the way I'm holding it, it's not so light. I think I showed it to you before, but it could be on Patreon. That's either a 26 or a 28 inch barrel. It's octagon, so it's a little bit lighter than if it was round, which was kind of the whole idea of octagon. And you, you, nevertheless, you maintain the rigidity. It's got a decent kind of a quarter rib, um, and it does not have iron sights. I can't figure, <laughs> I can't figure this out. Uh, truly, you know, uh, everybody likes passing laws these day, days. Maybe they should... Uh, a rifle without iron sights is kind of like a car without a steering wheel. You should be able to buy a rifle and take it out of the box and aim it and shoot it. But you can't. The, anyway, you, maybe I'm a broken record. So it's got a kind of a decent quarter rib and some kind of... Uh, rings they're, I mean they're all good and then you put a scope on and so forth and exceptionally accurate it's got the same action as the one I just showed you but you know for the untrained eye you would think that they're entirely different rifles because this one is I don't know what it is it's heavy um, nevertheless it aims beautifully and I think I think I did make a video on this one and if I you know, if I was going to use it all the time for hunting, I would send it to someone like Ralph Martini or someone in the American Custom Gun Makers Guild and just turn the barrel down forward of the forward forend so it'd be a little lighter because it's very muzzle heavy. But other people probably sit in tree stands or some other kind of hide and maybe they'd like it this way. Uh, anyway, 6.5 Creed Morph, I guess I keep saying that. Um, Beautiful rifle, beautifully made. These are made in Japan. You probably know that already. And then out of the blue comes uh, truly 
the rifle of the year. I had, had to take it out and shoot it. They all shoot to one inch, I think. Rifling and making a barrel is a skill that the factories have mastered virtually almost to perfection. It isn't hard for them to promise excellent accuracy, but if you're in the field, you know what I'm talking about. Does that accuracy really come to bear on your hunt? Uh, if, if you're running, gasping for air in deep snow or mud, or you've just jumped off an ATV, you take an offhand shot and the one minute of angle truly becomes irrelevant. It's, I mean, it's almost a combat situation. But anyhow, here are some rounds for you to enjoy looking at. Uh, that's a 500 Jeffrey. These are African rounds. So, I mean, if you were really serious um, when Africa was being explored, let's say the 500 Jeffrey was big medicine, then 450, 400, three inch. This comes in a three and a quarter. There are lots that I don't have here, the 404 Jeffrey and so on. 300 Holland and Holland, and then the everlasting 303 British. Uh, this 303 British, these two, and I kind of put three cartridges here along with my Rigby grease container for dramatic effect. They kind of look good on the table. They look better, um, you know, on some leather in the bush in a campsite, but there's nothing that the 303 British truly can't do. Exceptional round. A lot of times, though, we're reaching for, you know, rifles like this or a carbine like this. This is a jungle carbine. And as good as they are, um, you know, maybe it's not a bad idea to have something that was made, uh, you know, not so long ago. Uh, but great, great, great rifle. And if you own one of these, um, absolutely perfect. Getting back to the point of the video, uh, I have to tell you about a fellow that I've known for years who had an idea to start a gun shop um, in what most of you would consider the far north. It's not really the far north. Um, his name's Clay Smiley and he went out on a limb and opened a company called Profit River and I've dealt with him forever and um, I was lucky. Uh, now his business has been a smashing success and he has a lot of hunters and he's helped people in Canada and the United States with um, moving guns, of course, legally, with all the paperwork. I think he works for the company Border View Holdings or something like that, I don't know. But I buy guns all over the place and there's a lot of paperwork which you have to get used to. But it's a not, not a big deal, you have to be patient with some countries especially because somehow governments are focused on guns these days, should be focused on something else. But um, anyhow, Clay, uh, contacted me and he has this gun made in Italy by Uberti. Like I said, I took it out. It's the quickest shooting, most excellent. I had no problem hitting offhand because I try to be a realistic shooter because I have a lot of hunting experience and I don't mean to be arrogant, but uh, maybe you can lean against a tree. Maybe you have a shooting stick. Maybe you're more organized than me. Uh, but most of the time I kind of fall into the wild and I'm happy to be there. This is a great rifle. So what they did is, this is Uberi, Uberti, same action as I just showed you in that little carbine and that massive 6.5 Creedmoor, but finally they did the right thing, which is supply us with a really superb single shot rifle. I, I think I showed you the Ruger number one and 303 but they really just changed the chamber. Ruger changes the chamber. So you can buy all, like a, a 44 Magnum number one with a 20 inch barrel. I had one of those uh, for a few weeks. I wanted to make a video and then it was gone. But this, this rifle captures sort of not just African hunting, but practical hunting the way it, kind of I like it. So it's got the typical falling block action uh, that I showed you before. Uh, somebody asked me, is the Oberti better than the Miroku, like the product made in Japan? Oh, what a tough question. They're both 
perfect. Uh, I can't. I, I actually think the parts would interchange. I didn't take them apart. Maybe there are some flat springs or, or coil springs or something different. But what I like about the Uberti is, first off, superb iron sights. This is music to me. Uh, Four end that's not a monster. You, we don't need a. You don't need a blimp. If you look at the English rifles, if you look at rifles that people actually hunt with. You don't need a massive for it. This is handy. Also, they made it muzzle light. Now, a lot of people will pick it up and say, oh, it's muzzle light. Yeah, it's muzzle light. It's perfect. Um, just excellent. You're on right away. And with these metallic sights and this ammunition, what is this? Winchester 180 green, I think. Yeah, 303 British. And for those of you that are not familiar with the 303 British, it's arguably the most broadly distributed cartridge. I, I know the 3030 is very popular and I run into the 30 out 6 everywhere, uh, but because of the way the, uh, the British Empire was structured at one point, uh, the United Kingdom kind of, in a sense, ruled the world. That 303 British is everywhere. It has a rim, which is great for a single shot. You may remember I sort of dabbled with gun design for a while. Um, this rifle is fast, it's fancy. The, you know, they had to struggle with this Prince of Wales grip. They wanted to give you a longer grip and I spoke to a fellow that was close to the design process. So maybe to some of you this looks a little bit exaggerated, but it doesn't matter. You could always reduce it, but I wouldn't bother. They've got an excellent recoil pad. It's not one of those you know, super soft ones, which really, who needs them? It's like a silver's pad from the UK. And everything about the rifle sort of begs to go hunting. It's so slick. And with that muzzle lightness, you're instantly on target. You know, in a lot of ways, if you're, if you're in the field, and especially the younger folks that write me, things happen, nothing's happening. And then you think nothing ever <laughs> will happen. Uh, and then invariably things start happening, but it's, it's all in moments. And it's a rifle like this, which you can, you know, you can react quickly. And I guess if you had to have a scope, because some people, you know, they need scopes, eyesight and so on. I would put, you know, I don't know, some kind of uh, one to four or two to seven Leopold, something something not too heavy and something not so you don't burden like a perfectly usable rifle uh with with a really big scope uh, it's defeating the whole purpose anyway um you can tell i'm excited about this rifle uh, offhand easy to get two inch groups and that i mean i'm not a i'm not really a target shooter i mean i could be but i'm not and i, I explained before how target shooting sort of cascaded into hunting and uh, the, the, the different forms of shooting cascade into one another. Uh, nowadays, military kind of designs are kind of cascading into sporting designs, but actually there's a purity in hunting rifles, which maybe is just fine as it is and has been for like hundreds of years. Anyhow, if you're lucky enough to find one of these, um, I did check with Clay at Prophet River uh, because I think through board review they can ship all over the place, but if I'm wrong, um, please forgive me. Uh, the laws are always changing. Anyway, it clearly says 303 British in front of the chamber. It's got an excellent quarter rip that I wanted to draw to your attention because it's not one of these overbearing, uh, weird quarter, quarter ribs with too many screws. Uh, it, it has to have a certain beefiness. Some people, t I think, take them off, and they do offer a quarter rib with no cuts. Like this is kind of that Picatinny design, which isn't exactly classic. But as far as making a rifle that blends classic design with you know practical marketing realities, because they can't make something that doesn't accept a scope. Everybody will be hacking them up to put a scope on. Um, this, I think, they struck the perfect balance. If you can, maybe, I don't know, maybe Cabela's has them, maybe somebody, you know, you don't know how guns move, but um, just handle one of these. And then 
and then handle one of the long bolt actions with muzzle heavy and yeah you'll see what I mean it's it's kind of it's kind of like a model 94 in terms of how quick it points but the 303 British truly does offer a lot more than the model 94 and I was lucky you know I showed up with you know in the gun thing uh, at a time when the I still caught some fellows that were in Africa when Africa was really wild and they did have the big guns and they did you know see the need for them but quite a few of them I mean I probably should write a book one day uh, just use the 303 British if you put full metal jacket bullets in the 303 British practically speaking it won't do the 900 yard shot but who takes those and um, and maybe a charging whatever needs something else but yeah 303 British I don't know if we can focus in on this but it's nice to see on just forward of the receiver 303 British and um, oh about that color case hardening because I've had f five or six conversations about that I don't know I don't have a Rockwell hardness tester it, it looks to me like color case hardening somebody said it's not and maybe it isn't maybe it's some kind of chemical treatment but they did a great job it looks just it looks just superb so I handled this I shot this and I kind of compared it to a whole bunch of other rifles you know I go through a lot of rifles I'm in a kind of privileged position but Uberti really um, accomplished everything you, you could toss away all the rest and within its range the 303 British which you can load to some you know with some heavy bullets 220 grains even more some fellows use anyhow that's enough talking for me I'll head out in the wilderness I hope everything's good with you and that your hunting and shooting is going well I hope the channel's okay too thanks for watching and stay healthy we'll see you next time